always, I had this feeling like I had this hole in the center of my being. Nothing filled that hole until finally when I came out into nature and, and the forest saved my life. My name's Lynx. I was born in 1965 in London, England. At about age 12, I started to question what was the purpose in being alive on this earth. Uh, I felt like we're just gonna be destroyed by nuclear bombs. So <clears throat> I started to get into the punk rock scene, you know, made my hair all blue. I had this gaping hole inside of my chest. I tried to fill it with art and music and theater and drugs and alcohol and sex and still the hole was there and I couldn't do, I couldn't, I couldn't fill it. I didn't know what to fill it with. And um, by the time I reached 19, I realized that if I didn't do something else, I was gonna kill myself. And the forest is what healed me. The forest is what gave me that fullness that has given me meaning and purpose in my life and I made a commitment at that point that I wanted to live lightly on the earth, low impact and I wanted to be able to share that with people. So that was kind of the beginning. Ten years ago I started the Four Seasons Prehistoric Projects to take people out into the wilderness for an extended period of time. A total immersion without tents, sleeping bags, matches or metal. Nothing from the modern world. But before this, for four months, I have to teach them how to rely on nature only for their survival. Okay, we want to cut around like this and go all the way in. Kind of cut from here and start cutting in toward the, the spine. Start here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll work or otherwise we might need another blade. Try, let me try that second one. Let me see, maybe I just need to work. What, more like a saw. It's this outside stuff that is kind of hard to get started, but once you get into it, alright. Sometimes I'll separate jerky into sinewy jerky and clean jerky. Once you've got your piece cleaned up pretty nice, to make actual jerky out of it, you want to go about, you want to be as thin as possible with a stone blade. My name is Robin Bliss Wagner. I'm 27 years old. There was a time a few years ago when I was doing all kinds of things to make money because I thought I really had to make money and I wasn't really happy with the work that I was doing. So I would like to start Coming here is like coming to learn from a master and I'm hoping that I can learn as much as possible in these months ahead. My name is Ira Christian, and my, I'm 23 years old now. I expect to be cold. I expect to be hungry. Uh, I expect to feel really connected to the people that I'm with and to the place that I am. And um, to feel alive is what I'm looking for, I guess. Uh, my name is Danielle. I grew up in Vancouver, BC, and um, I'm 22 years old. I guess I'm after a really deep understanding of place and how to live somewhere um, and not necessarily because I want to live this primitive lifestyle you know my whole life just because I want to see it and try it uh, it's not like I'm against the civilized world or anything along those lines I don't think that there's a right way to live this is just something that I'm exploring right now the way I like to teach people 
possible is I will show them the possibility. I give somebody a seed, then that doesn't mean that I give them the fruits of the seed. It just means I give them the seed. It's up to them what they're going to do with that seed. I can't make somebody live all prehistoric in five months if they don't put the energy into it. I've seen a flower with a three centimeter long seed pod though. So mess. We're, we're ten. This class, I want to call it listening to the rocks. I'm not really so interested in learning what we as a species have named everything around us. I'm more interested in hearing directly from the things in our environment what they have to teach us. Density and sharpness and high pitch they do tell us something and it sounds like you learned already what that means the higher the pitch the sharper the edge i want everybody to go find a rock with a, a sharp edge like this of a fairly smooth consistency and create what we call a discoidal blade look out there. that was a good one the rocks are the bones of the earth the rocks have their voices and they're talking to us. After today, this fire has to be lit with friction. We have a drill, we have a hearth. You can think about it in terms of male and female. And if you hear that squeak, it means more pressure. where it can be nurtured and fed. And you give it the breath of life. And pass it carefully to the next one. Don't drop the baby. Then we have a fire, which is making us human too. selection that happens with a group. Since we started, such a lot has changed. Of that initial group, half of them left within one month. Then we also had some other people who came and assimilated into the group very well. People leave for a variety of different reasons. Sometimes it pushes people's comfort levels to a place that they don't want to go, and not just on a physical way, mentally and emotionally, sometimes people are forced to look inside of themselves, and maybe they're not willing to really go to where it's going to bring them. You have to commit 100% to this to make it actually work. To be part of the creative forming of a group, it have to just allow it to happen in an organic way. And that's what's happened. This group has become very close and I adore them. They're like my family right now. Je m'appelle Camille, j'ai 20 ans, um, je viens d'Australie, um, mon père français, ma mère australienne, um, et à ce moment j'habite à Londres. 
I've been there doing, studying fine art, which um, has been ex particularly interesting. And through this course, I started to learn that I wanted to be more in tune with my feelings and emotions. Arriving here, the first week I felt very uncomfortable. I'm going into the wild with everything that you've made yourself and being hungry and probably being cold. Yes, I was very nervous, but over time, you just your body becomes attuned to these things. And I'm really hoping that when I do go back to London, that I can take these lessons that I've learned and really apply them to what I'm doing there. I think there's a lot of reasons why I came here. A lot of it, I think, is to learn. I'm Jemaya. Um, I'm 16. And I come from a small town in Northern California called Ukiah. Growing up homeschooled and just getting being exposed to nature, and I feel like it's made me care more about the effects that I have on nature. Sometimes when I pick up a piece of stone, I can see what it wants to become just by looking at it. And then I start working it with that in mind. And sometimes I don't really know, but I start to work the stone and something will emerge out of it as I'm working it. The last three months since I began this project have been very busy. And it's been wonderful to be doing all this work because it's, it's just really fulfilling to be creating my own clothing and, and uh, to be tra it's like transforming a hide into a, a buckskin and these sorts of things. When I first arrived, I almost didn't believe that I would be able to complete everything, but I was determined to be here and to be going in a few days, you know, to, to make it with the group. Physically, this is my ideal way of living. My body feels so happy running down the meadow to get water and riding the horses back up in the evening and working with my hands during the day. It just feels really healthy to be out here, breathing the fresh air, sleeping out in the meadow at night. I definitely sleep the best on hard ground with a buffalo robe and the stars twinkling down on me. As far as wearing more masks than you would be living in a city or something, you don't have the opportunity here because we live too closely together. You can't really hide anything. And I think that's part of the beauty of it is that you, you learn to be a lot more comfortable with yourself because you can't lie about who you are. Everyone can just see right through it. Um, and the strength that comes out of a group that is comfortable with that and knows that is pretty incredible. We're leaving in the morning. So after four months of preparation, we go time traveling. And that's when we leave behind all the modern stuff. We leave metals, we leave glass, plastics, cloth, and we replace those elements with stone, bone, wood, skin, and go out there with just the things that we've made. I feel the group is very strong this year and they have a lot of motivation and skill. They're capable, young, strong people. So I feel encouraged by that. From this point onward, my role is actually a transition role from being a teacher to being a member of the clan, walking alongside of these people as one of them.
at last, after four months of preparation, it's time to dive into the heart of the Rocky Mountains. Apparently it's better cooked. <laughs> so, we got probably three hours or something like that to get camp set up, get the fire going, and have dinner made and have our beds ready. No more flashlights. We're got to be ready by the time darkness comes. So, horse clan. Take the horses, stake one of them in the meadow. Wolf clan, get a fire going in the fire pit. And the rest of us will work on the pack baskets, arranging the food. I'll volunteer to do dinner tonight. Um, buffalo, mushrooms, ramps. Ooh, um, nettles. Nettles. Fat. Yeah, lots of fat. Did you wash your hands? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. We got more meat, yeah? Yeah, we've got quite a bit of meat left. Yeah. Yeah, we've been eating this buffalo for months. Four months now. Eight people, four months. One How many animal. pounds was it again? 900 pounds. It's so different than dry meat. When we come out and do these projects, we change our diet radically. We stop eating sugars, we stop drinking alcohol. We're going from a high carbohydrate diet in the modern world to a high protein diet. We are only doing whole carbs and whole grains and so on for the last two weeks before we come out so that the transition is going to be more gradual. But as long as we're getting enough calories, I feel like things even out. Everybody tends to lose a little bit of weight, but they come out of this feeling clearer and stronger than they felt ever before. I started long distance running when I was about 20. I could run really far and I went from running 20 miles a day to all of a sudden one day I could run 65 miles. It was like the earth just wanted me to run over the top of it. My name is Matt Graham and I'm 39 years old and from Boulder, Utah. I live in the beautiful Grand Staircase National Monument. I realized I was I, I invited Matt, he's a friend, a brother almost. He's uh, amazing in the wilderness, and he's gonna join us for 10 days. The Atlatl, it's been around for gosh, at least at least 10,000 years from our archaeological records. It, uh, it pre so it predates the bow and arrow on, on all continents. This right here, this, this is my life in a nutshell for this project. Um, on this project, I brought this everything to pack in. I put it in this uh, backpack, which is made out of buffalo skin. And then there's a few pockets here and there. The, uh, the tools that I decided to bring, uh, a bunch of sinew so that I could do repairs, tie up things. I have in here also some traps, trap parts. These are for uh, deadfalls for trapping squirrels and other game. 
Then there's uh, there's a bow and all for doing any sewing for a couple projects. Here I have an extra antler wedge, which is used for doing woodwork for splitting wood, as well as it's used as a chisel too if you hit it in the back side. It's a very functional tool. Such a good catch. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I would not make a good hunter. Why not? When you have something like right in your hands and you feel a life force leaving it, it's such an incredible feeling and I don't know, there's a bigger sense of responsibility somehow, I think. It's one thing with these little insects, but when you see the big brown eyes of something looking at you and you watch its life disappear and feel its spirit flying, <clears throat> it's a whole different story. If you go into a supermarket and you look at all those pre-packaged things wrapped up, you're not looking at them and thinking about them being a living animal. But it gives you a whole different relationship and I think it gives people a lot more respect when they actually take life themselves. You know, we have a story. You think about all the things that have fed us and what it was that fed them. The fish will feed from the grasshoppers and the grasshoppers are feeding from whatever it is they eat in the grass here. It's like all those elemental forces then somehow become connected and part of our bodies in a way that we can understand. Some people say those people are playing Indians. They're wearing buckskins, they got moccasins on, look at their bows, and they accuse us of cultural appropriation. And I can't help thinking about our ancestors from Europe or any other continent where everybody had a bow, everybody made friction fire somewhere far enough back. If you go enough years, these skills are universal. Everybody did it. primitive style fishing that we're doing here. We make everything ourselves. The, the main line here is made from the mane of my horse's hair. And then the leader line is from a plant fiber called dogbane, which we strip out and twine. We've been using horse flies and grasshoppers for bait. The hooks are made from the buffalo bone that we processed this spring. When you teach people how to use things and make things from a very basic um, place like you harvest a plant and make a line from it or you brush the horse's mane and you make a fishing line from it or break up the bone and make the the bone hooks then people are they're becoming like they have a different way of being and they have a different relationship with their things for one thing they think that the the things that they use then become more valuable to them and this creates like a different breed of people Oh. 
Thank you, friend. Thank you for your life. at these mountain lion tracks here on this trail and and there's a series of them what we can decipher is there's two young and possibly a larger probably the female and what we're looking at here we're looking at a track that it looks like when it hit it hit like this and twisted a little bit this way and pushed off giving a deep edge over here most of them have a very distinct leading toe on them and then the other two toes come off to the side like this and then the other toes here and the typical three lobes in the back and cats usually don't register their claws unless they're in muddy soil or they're about ready to pounce on an animal a lot of times they'll pop them out for extra traction to get in there one of the things i really love about a, a lion is its its playfulness one time i was out running in sequoia national park and i was coming around one of the switchbacks and a lion was just standing there on the trail. And it, it was kind of faced the direction that I was running, but it, it looked over its shoulder and it just kind of looked at me for a second. And, and then it took a couple steps forward and it, it moved its beautiful tail really gracefully a couple times. So I ran up behind the mountain lion. We go down a few switchbacks, at least a quarter mile together. and. And then it, it ran up ahead just a little bit, took a few quicker steps, and then it stopped really quick. And it looked up at the cliff, and then it looked at me. And it, had, it seemed like it had a little smirk in its eyes. It swished its tail again, and then it just went and flew up that cliff like a lightning bolt. It was just like, see if you could follow this. <laughs> you know, it's interesting to wonder if you can live in the 21st century as a hunter-gatherer and if everybody did it, certainly no. That's, I'm pretty sure of that. We are already so scarce on resources. The knowledge that our ancestors had for how to live on and with the earth, much of that knowledge has been lost. And so we're scraping around, trying to relearn things <clears throat> by trial and error or you know, reading ethnographical accounts and so on. It's not as easy as the books say. It's not as romantic as just walking out in the woods and all of a sudden finding a deer and building, building clothing and, and just automatically being able to survive. It takes dedication and time, you know? I guess that's the ravine we fall up to Quicksand Meadow. And then that pass must be Goat Lake and Island Lake. And, and then we'll head up there for our next fishing trip for a few days. And the real high rocky stuff. Branches wide and open. Come down. Honor your feast. Wow. That is so beautiful. It's it's really yeah, it's really hard to leave. I wanna see this berry group do another hunter gather trip together. Matt, he embodies, I think, more of the wild than any other human being I've ever met. Let's 
not be five years before we meet no. again, okay? No, no, no. Always, always train. Train to walk silently. Train to rove and shoot instinctively with blunt arrows on imaginary targets. Started cruising through the forest, cruise through easy thoughts. Their feet, maybe a moccasin here or there, rawhide sandals for a treat. And then we're back in the camp, and we got the coals glowing, and the heat is amped. Just 15 yards away, no make it 10. That sounds good, so I can get a shot, make it fire real good. And then we'll all be eating elk meat From the Stone Age From the Stone Age To the Iron Age From the Iron Age To the Stone Age From the Stone Age It hasn't been my intention to come here to escape. I'm here because I think it's important in this time when the Earth is in crisis to learn what it is to be a part of it. And so being here is not about, for me, being a caveman or traveling through time to the Stone Age. It's about seeing the world fully as it is in all the ecological systems and, and healthy natural relationships that sustain all of life. And my interest is in learning how healthy communities work and bringing that inspiration and knowledge to my community at home and throughout the world. I don't think that it works if the entire world wants to be civilized and wants the, you know, nice little house with the picket fence and like, you know, that typical American dream that we're all supposed to be going for. Um, like the earth can't support that, but I feel like there's enough space that if people took a look at what they wanted and what they needed and put their lives together in a way that, um, that allowed for that to happen, I feel like we'd be fine and it's not, a, you know, it doesn't have to be out here, it doesn't have to be like this, and I don't think that, you know, even civilization on its own is just a terrible thing. I just don't think it's gonna work for everyone. For me, it's like realizing then is like, there's so much that I don't need to have in my life, but at the same time, I still kind of want to have it, you know, and it's like, it's that dilemma of like, where's the line, where's the line of, is this having a negative effect overall for me, or just on nature and everything, for me to have this or not? And yeah, where can you, where do you draw the line of what I need and don't need and what I don't need but still want to have? I'm going back to the my fishing pole. Hey, fishing pole, you bows, your arrows. Have you opened to the toilet? Did everyone go to the bathroom? <laughs> Sometimes the clan splits. Some stay at the camp, others go exploring new territories.
Yeah, I'm gonna take your butt. Oh, thanks, man. Hey guys, the weather's coming in. This tree probably would be pretty good for cover if we can keep everything under here. Um, Cammy's got the fire going over here. And here's our firewood. What about the dinner? Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, let's make this really big. Should we put a rock wall around this? We can put some down on the down side. I'll just put this right on top of there. Um, I don't know, I need to take a look. What was in the dinner, Jim? Um, it's just wild rice, the buffalo meat, um, Saskatoon patties, and um, wild ramps. Oh yeah, ramps. Secret ingredient. You threw a whole lot of fat in there as well, didn't you? Oh yeah. yeah. Some salt. Yeah, a little salt. Mmm. Really tasty. Yeah, they just got that just amazing creamy fatty rice. Goodness, man. Such yeah. a good one. Yeah. I definitely notice that my body's craving salt and fat. And the two main things, it seems like. Mine's just avocado. <laughs> Jam, this meal's awesome, but I can't help dreaming about my grandma's apple pie, man. Just all like crispy, lard crust full of apples and cinnamon. And oh, she puts man. like a dab of butter in. And, just enough sugar for the flavor. Let's stay dry, my friend. Oh. Buffalo hopes are so much more comfortable than sleeping bags.
morning. Sweet. Blue sky. Oh, yeah. Pine nuts are a great source of protein. We have to harvest them before the squirrels. Yeah, that's a good branch. That one's not so good on your left leg. You can pass them down here, Lynx. It comes. Yeah, it just comes back. I learned what it feels like to be part of a tribe, living out on the land, eating wild food, making music together and roaming the land, wearing buckskins, sleeping in buffalo robes, shooting bows that we made ourselves, eating food that we hunted and gathered ourselves. I hope that at least all my own children get to feel that someday. And it's something that I hope that everybody in the world at least gets a taste of somehow. I wanted to learn about real life. I want, and I wanted to learn, yeah, how to, how to be a human being, I suppose, with the earth. And, and um, I feel like all the, I've learned <laughs> quite a bit about all those things. Um, Thanks for making it happen with me. Helping me be where I am today. When we have a vision or a dream, and we have, sometimes we need flexibility or perseverance and patience to keep going with it. But I believe that I've learned finally that we can create, we, we can manifest our desires. And that's been a very empowering part of this project for me. After three weeks of total immersion, comes the time to go back to civilization. Okay, wow. just watch for little bones. I want you to choke. That is incredible. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. My head's getting too big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so JD, where were you? The other one's probably hot. Playing music and eating cashews? Uh, no, no, no. We were, we were we eyes. Uh, well, you'll see later. There we go, guys. Ooh, wow. Oh, baby. Oh, gosh. That's done. I like this. But actually, no, that stuff is actually. As I began to think, I began to imagine myself back in London. Um, you know, living the life that I used to lead going to school, taking the tube, going to work, going to the supermarket, buying my broccoli and my carrots already chopped up in a little plastic bag, and then getting home and just eating them like that. Um, 
everything just ready prepared, not even knowing where these vegetables come from. You know, playing around on my iPhone, having internet, having everything, having the latest gadget, having the latest trend, having so many clothes that I can't even decide what to wear in the morning. Um, spending so much time in front of the mirror and so much time drinking and experimenting with drugs so that I can kind of find a way to interact with people in maybe a more exciting or more interesting way. And I realized that I was just wasting so much time. I don't want to read someone else's story. I want to create my own story. And I want it to be the best story it can be. And that's not going to be done sitting in a classroom, listening to other people telling me what I should and shouldn't do, or what is right and wrong, or what concepts are stronger than others, or, whew. It just doesn't make sense to me anymore. My plan is um, to travel the world, experience everything that I want to experience, go on some crazy adventures, but mainly have this focus on permaculture and a good sustainable way of life. I spend most of my time in the wilderness in my yurt. I do not want to live like a hermit. I like people, but I've not yet been able to find the tribe that I dream of. Yeah, there's some, I like some of the comfortable things about the modern world. I'm always trying to find a balance, I guess. John gives me balance and he gives me grounding. He knows how to be out in the mountains just as much as he knows how to function in the everyday modern world, you know, through his job as an editor and he can work on a computer. He built this house. He, he, can, he can drift between the two worlds very comfortably. And that's a good buffer for me because it's not always so easy for me to transition back into the modern world. I don't know that I'm not part of the problem. I think we're all as long as I'm still doing something that's, I, you know, my conscience doesn't always sit right with me when I travel in a car or fly in a jet, I'm part of the problem, yes. Um, <clears throat> part of the solution, am I part of the solution? Yeah, we can all be part of the solution too. It's about being conscious and, and um, learning to live in a good way and teaching other people being a good example. Sometimes I'm part of the problem, sometimes I'm part of the solution. I, I'm going to work on the solutions.